Unit 1. Unit 1 is all about expressions and we will be starting off in this video with learning target 1a which is all about modeling expressions. By the end of this lesson you will be able to determine the difference between a variable, algebraic expression, and numerical expression as well as be able to write a word, write an expression given a word phrase. So before we jump into some vocabulary, the first thing I want to point out is that since we're dealing with expressions in this entire unit, we have no problems that will have any equal signs. So each one of these problems will just be an expression, meaning one side of an equation. So we have no equal signs in this unit. Our second unit, unit two, will be all about equations. And we'll be dealing with what can I do with an equation once I'm given it. Now, as you start off in a lot of math classes, you might notice that we always start with vocabulary. And the reason behind that is it's important to have, honestly, some vocab words to be able to talk about this stuff. Just like if you were taking a foreign language class and learning a language, you want to make sure that we kind of all have the same vocabulary words and they're defined the same for each of us as we're using them. So as we get onto more concepts and harder concepts, we're able to understand the basics between all the vocabulary words and what they really mean. So our first vocabulary word for learning target 1a is what is a variable. A variable is a symbol, usually a letter, that represents the value of a varying quantity. So the most common example I would say for what is a variable, if I'm going to write out some examples on the side, would be x. x is a variable. It's, it's a letter in this case, and it's just going to represent in an expression some varying quantity that I want to change. Another letter that we can use, maybe we want to use the letter A, because sometimes we use that instead of X, Y, lots of letters that we could use. And it doesn't technically have to be a letter, it could also be a symbol. As you get on to other math classes, you might have a class that uses maybe a Greek letter. So Greek letters come up a lot in trigonometry, and it could get used there as well. Our second vocabulary word is a numerical expression. A numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that includes numbers and operation symbols, no variables or equal signs. So again, none of these are going to have equal signs because they're just expressions, but a numerical expression in particular actually has no variables. So it just includes numbers and operation symbols. So one example we could do is I'll use a couple of my favorite numbers, Let's say 13 times 7 that would be a numerical expression because I have two numbers here and they're connected by, in this case, multiplication, which would be our operation. As long as I don't have a variable, that would give me a numerical expression. An algebraic expression, on the other hand, is a mathematical phrase that includes numbers, operation symbols, and one or more variables, but I still don't have the equal sign just because we're dealing with an expression. So the difference between a numerical expression and an algebraic expression is that in an algebraic expression, we have a variable now that we are including in this. So for example, maybe instead of 13 times 7, it's let's say 13 times x would be an example of a numerical expression. Or if we want to make it a little bit more complicated, we could say 13 times x minus 1 would be an example of an algebraic expression. Okay, our first nine examples here say determine if the following are a variable, numerical expression, or algebraic expression. So you guys saw me give you some examples up on the side when we define the vocabulary words. So why don't you pause the video right now and decide for all nine of these. So 1a all the way to 1i. Why don't you decide if they're a variable, a numerical expression, or an algebraic expression, and then we will check that together. Okay, let's check our first example. So I'm going to go through and find all the variables first. So part A says x. Well, that would just be a variable since there's no numbers, nothing else going on there. There's just the single letter or, or symbol that we're using. Let's see if I have any more variables. That's not, B is not going to be a variable. Neither will C or D. E is going to be a variable because it's a single letter or a symbol. So M, in this case, F isn't, G, H, and I. No, I have no other variables. That's okay. 
let's go and find our numerical expressions. So remember, I'm looking for ones that just have numbers and operation symbols. So b negative 3 plus 5, that would be a numerical expression. I'm going to shorthand expression there since I have no variables. C is not going to be because there's a variable in play. Same thing with D, there is a variable there, so it can't be a numerical expression. F 10 times 7 minus 4, that is going to be a numerical expression. Let's see if we have any more. 4 times A, nope. 100 over 2X, nope. 10 squared plus 13. This will be a numerical expression. It's a little bit more complicated than some other ones, but there is no variable in here, so this is a numerical expression. Then our last ones that we're finding are algebraic expressions, which hopefully should be all the ones that are left, but let's just double check. So C says X over 2, so this is an algebraic expression. It involves a variable and numbers and operations. So here I have X divided by 2. On part D, 3 times Y plus 10, that will be an algebraic expression as well. So I have multiplication, addition, I've got 3, 10, and a variable. 4 times A, that will also be an algebraic expression. It's really tempting to want to say that that's a variable because we don't have anything added or subtracted, but I do have this 4 as a coefficient to our variable, and so what happens is that is now an algebraic expression because it's a number times the variable. And then our um, H is also an algebraic expression, 100 divided by 2x. Let's go on to modeling some of these expressions. So what modeling means is kind of, well, in a word format question or a word problem, how would that go about? So none of these are particularly word problems because we're not solving for anything yet, but this is important foundation so that as we build up to solving word problems, we make sure that we have that vocabulary and that language to help us. So example two says list as many words as you can think of that represent the following operations. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Again, I'm going to have you guys pause the video and why don't you list as many words as you can think of that go with each of those four operations. Okay, so there's a lot of words that can go with all these and I'm not going to write them all down, but I'm going to write some key ones that come up a lot. So for addition, the first one I think of is plus because that's really what it is. I'm adding two things together. I could also think of it as a sum. If I get a little bit more fancier, I could think of it as more than because I'm adding to it, so it's more than what I started with. And then one last one I thought about was total. Now, there's plenty of other ones, so if I don't list one that you wrote down, feel free to ask me a question and see if it is one, but more than likely, you guys are good. Subtraction, when I think of subtraction, I immediately think minus. I could also think of it as a difference. And then as kind of a fancier one to go with the more than, well, subtraction would be something that is less than because I'm making it smaller. For multiplication, times is one that we usually think about right away because I'm timesing those two numbers together. I could think about it as a product. Or I could think about it as like twice something because twice of something would be like two times that quantity. So twice three times it, four times it, five times it, etc. Now our last one of division, I think about it as a quotient because I'm taking the quotient of two things. I could also say it is divided by. So I'm dividing two things in division. And the last one I thought about was a ratio. I have a ratio of two things there. Okay, we're going to help us, we're going to use this list to help us answer question three. So question three is all about taking a word phrase and creating an algebraic expression with it. So we will have a variable, we'll have numbers, we'll have some type of operation symbols going on here. So let's look at the first one. So 3a says 24 more than a number x. So the first thing I notice in here is more than. So more than was going with our addition. So that was that list up here that we used. So I should be using addition on this then. So if I break apart the rest of it, I have 24 more than a number x. What that translates to is if I start with x, 
more than, so I'm gonna add 24 to that number x. So 24 more than a number x would translate into x plus 24 as an algebraic expression. Hmm. Part B says 13 less than a number m. Well, I'm gonna underline what probably is gonna be my operation. So I have less than here. Less than went with our subtraction. So I'm gonna be subtracting two things here. And subtraction tends to be the one that gives people a little bit of difficulty because it really matters what order we write them in. If I look back at example A, I could write x plus 24, or I could also write 24 plus x because op uh, addition is commutative and the way in which I add numbers actually doesn't matter. But subtraction is not commutative. The order in which I subtract numbers does matter. So we have to really think about well, which number are they starting with and then which one am I subtracting. So 13 less than a number m. What that means is that I'm taking away 13 from m. So I have m minus my 13 then. So 13 less than a number m would mean that I'm starting with my number m and I'm taking away 13 from it. So I would have to have m minus 13. I could not rewrite these in the other order. Hey, let's do 3c. So 3c says 10 times a number y. Why don't you guys pause the video and do c on your own and then we'll check it. So the first thing I'm noticing on C is that word times. So that times is telling me, okay, I'm dealing with multiplication, 10 times a number Y. So I could write 10 times Y like that. Or if I wanna use parentheses, I could do 10 parentheses times Y. Or because multiplication is commutative, I could do Y times 10. But personally, the most common way we would see this is 10 times Y with no parentheses, just because I tend to, we tend to use parentheses if I have a quantity of things I'm trying to multiply, but since y is a single term, there is really no need for those parentheses. But actually all three of these would be acceptable answers and would all be correct. Okay, D, why don't you guys do D on your own first and then we'll check it. So D says the quotient of a number n and four. So that key phrase I'm picking up on there is quotient, which means I'm dealing with division so I have the quotient of n and four. So division, I have to make sure I'm paying attention to, well, what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. So the first one they give us is gonna be in the numerator. So a quotient of a number n and four means that four would be in the denominator because it's the second one that they're giving us. So the word n is kind of representing the division bar here of n divided by four. Another way that you could write it if you wanted to write it with the division sign would be n division sign four. Personally, this will just be helpful with the um, fraction bar instead. will be just helpful as we get on to later classes. And also it just looks a little less cumbersome. Okay, but both are correct as well. Okay, let's look at E. So E says 15 less than twice a number X. Ooh, we got a lot going on in here. I see two things. We have this less than and we have that word twice. So if we go back up, now twice doesn't stand out as obvious as some other words though, but less than is dealing with division, or I'm sorry, less than is dealing with subtraction, and twice was dealing with multiplication over here. So I have two operations that are going on. So we have 15 less than, and then we have this second part. Well, we've seen something already of the form that was a number less than something else. That's similar up here to part B. So in part B, we had 13 less than a number M, and we started with that number M and we subtracted 15 or subtracted 13. So in this case, I'm gonna have something, which we'll figure out in a second, and then minus 15 from there. So the first part of this with 15 less than would mean I need to start with something and I'm gonna subtract 15 from it. Now the second part of this, I'm gonna to go to a different color here, is the twice a number x. So the second piece is dealing with what twice a number x means. Well, twice is our multiplication, so that means that I would have two times x, 
as twice a number x, so 15 less than twice a number x would mean 2x minus 15 as one whole final answer here. Hmm? So we can see now in the first four examples, we just had one operation going on. We can start to build and put more and more of these together, and it's just gonna make our algebraic expression a little bit more complicated, but if we take it one step at a time, we can really think through each of those individual pieces. Hi. Okay. Part F. Part F says the product of 10 and the sum of a number x and two. Why don't you guys pause the video and try F on your own first, and then we'll check it together. Okay, so let's check part F. So I see the word product, so I'm gonna have some type of multiplication then. So I have the product of 10 and something else. So this word and, although it's not an operation, it's really key. It's telling me what two things I'm multiplying together. So I'm gonna have the product of 10 and whatever the second piece is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start rewriting this as 10 times something. And the parentheses here I might not end up needing, but I'm gonna go ahead and write them in case this second piece is a little bit more complicated. Now the second part of this is dealing with the sum. So I have an, another operation here of addition, and I'm taking the sum of a number x and two. So the sum of a number x and two would be x plus two, since I'm summing those two numbers together, or two plus x, the order in which we write the addition does not matter. So if we wanted to write it as two plus x, we could do that as well. So overall, we have the product of 10 and this x plus two or two plus x. So I'm gonna fill that in, in my parentheses. Now in part F here, I absolutely need to keep those parentheses because I have two terms inside of them. So I have to have the parentheses in part F versus in part C. Up here, we had talked about the fact that the parentheses weren't really necessary since it was just 10 times Y. Versus in part F now, I have 10 times a whole nother quantity, which is X plus two. Okay, our last example, part G says the quotient of the difference between three and a number X and seven. So why don't you guys pause the video again and try this one and then we'll check it. Okay, let's check part G. So the quotient means I'm gonna have a division of the difference. So I'm gonna have a quotient overall and I have to figure out, well, what is in the numerator and what is in the denominator? So it's the quotient of the difference between x and, I'm sorry, the difference between three and a number x and seven. So what this is telling me is when I have a phrase that says the quotient of, the first part is what's in my numerator. So the numerator will represent the difference between three and a number x. And then that word and remember is giving us kind of that division bar. So and seven, which means that seven will be in my denominator then. And the tricky part now is to figure out, well, what does the difference between three and a number x really mean? So we haven't seen the word difference yet. We've used less than so far each time that we did subtraction, but difference I can use for subtraction as well. So the difference between three and a number x would mean three minus that x. So less than dealt with taking the second term and subtracting from it because I was making it smaller. Difference is similar to the word sum in the sense that it's the first guy minus the second guy. So the difference between three and a number x would be three minus that x. And then all over, the whole thing's over seven, not just the three and not just the x, but the entire fraction there is all over seven. So my final answer will be three minus x all over seven. And that will be the end of learning target 1a. I know it was a lot of vocabulary and just getting used with some of these words and that will help build us up for all of our later sections.